about plant cell, animal cell, differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, cell theory. There are some other concepts like you have to study them since we have done animal tissue, plant cells are not one in the Smallest cell is mycoplasma. Mycoplasma is also called as PPLO, pleuronemonia like organisms. Size of some cells and other things I have not mentioned it, but you should go through that for one mass. Okay. So the size of the cell will be very small. In case of ostrich, the egg cell is very large. So size varies from the smallest mycoplasma to the largest in the egg cell of ostrich. So in today's class, we are going to discuss about the fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane. Plasma membrane is also called as cell membrane. Cell membrane is found both in plants as well as animals. Okay, but cell wall is found only in plants. In the previous class, we had discussed about that differences, isn't it? See, they form a boundary. Cell membrane forms a boundary. It gives a definite shape and size to the cell. They form the boundary, and when you study them chemically, so they for the first time they studied in human RBC, that is red blood cells or erythrocytes. For the first time they studied the membrane, they found that this membrane, the cell membrane, it is made up of phospholipid layer. Okay, so bilipid layer, phospholipid bilayer, or phospholipid layer. And lipid, here it is having two parts to it. The circular part is going to the polar surface and here the extension like we call it as the non-polar. These blue colored structures we call it as non-polar region. Polar surface, the lipid has polar and non-polar zones. Polar region is hydrophilic, that is they absorb water and the non-polar are hydrophobic. They are not going to help in uh, movement of water. So there is both hydrophilic and hydrophobic in the lipid layer. Okay. The lipid membrane, it is made up of what type of lipids? It is phosphoglycerides. Chemically, the lipid of cell membrane, it is made up of phosphoglycerides. The cell membranes, apart from this phospholipids, they are also having proteins and carbohydrates. The later studies using uh, higher electron microscopes, they were able to identify that apart from phospholipid layer, they also have proteins and the carbohydrates. So the proteins and carbohydrates and the lipids and proteins, their ratio varies in different cell membranes. In the human RBC, what is human RBC also called as erythrocytes. The ratio of lipids as well as the proteins, if you look into proteins are more. 52% of the cell membrane of RBC, human RBC consists of protein. Remaining 40% uh, are lipids and remaining are other components. So this ratio varies in different types of cell membranes. In human RBC, they found that the ratio is 52% proteins and 40% lipids okay so based on the method of extraction of proteins from the uh, plasma membrane or cell membrane whether it is easy or difficult we have different types of uh, proteins see the integral protein they are very difficult to extract because they are deep inside and they are transmembranal protein or the very the Indian structure one is there it is transmembranal protein or integrated protein. It is integrated between the two phospholipid layers. Now there are certain proteins which are found floating on the surface. Surface proteins are And uh, surface proteins, they are also, if they are attached at the periphery sides, we call it as periphery proteins. Based on the easiness of extraction of proteins, we have this two types. Integral protein, which is difficult to extract, they are found you know, on both the membranes and there is a peripheral protein which is uh, very easy to extract and they are found on the surface of it. So it is very easy to extract this sort of proteins. Okay. So Singer and Nicholson later they put forth this uh, fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane. Who are the scientists who put forth fluid mosaic model of 
plasma membrane, which is most accepted also. It was by Singer and According to them, the lipid layer is semi fluid, semi solid. It is semi fluid, semi solid. That is what they call it as quasi nature of lipid. That implies it is semi solid and semi fluid type. Quasi nature of lipids. Fluid mosaic model. The mosaics are formed by the proteins. They are floating here. The proteins are floating here. So that is why I mean, since lipids are uh, fluid in nature, that is quasi nature is a semi solid, semi lipid, we call the model as fluid mosaic nature of plasma membrane or model of plasma membrane. So they help in lateral movement of proteins. Since they are semi solid, semi fluid, the proteins can move laterally in this model. Okay. Then the, this also, this fluid nature of membrane also helps in cell division, cell enlargement, okay, cell development, secretion of substances, endocyst formation. All these are possible because the cell membrane is semi-solid or quasi nature of lipids. That is plausible. Like the proteins are floating within this lipid layer I told you about. Laterally they move. So because of that, there is a cell growth, cell enlargement, egocyst formation, cell division also takes place because of this quasi nature of lipids. Okay? And if you look into the functions of plasma membrane, the plasma membrane is going to help in maintaining the shape and size of the cell. Plasma membrane is also selectively permeable. They can allow only certain substances to enter through them. Plasma membrane also exhibits passive as well as active absorption. Passive absorption of substances are without expenditure of energy. Without expenditure of energy, we call it as passive transport. Active transport, what you notice as possible. Talking about the functions of plasma membrane or cell membrane, what you have to remember is they are selectively permeable. For certain substances, they allow them to enter inside. Plasma membrane helps in maintaining a definite cell shape and size and attributes. Now, plasma membrane also has finger-like protrusions on them, especially in animal cells or cells which are involved in absorption. You can see this finger-like structures. What do you call them as? Micromillai or brush border, they help in increasing the surface area of absorption. So that is one aspect that you should remember. That is also the function of plasma membrane. Then they undergo diffusion. Diffusion is what? Movement of solvent, liquid or gas from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. We call it as diffusion. It can be entry of gases or any substance by for that matter. If there is a movement of water, diffusion of water, what do you call that as? Osmosis. Movement of solvent from a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential through a semi-permeable membrane. Now this plasma membrane is semi-permeable. So we call it as osmosis. You know about that osmosis also it allows. Then imbibition, you know that it is the surface absorption of water, absorption of water by hydrophilic colloidal substances. Imbibition, the germination of seeds is an example for imbibition. They would increasing in size during the uh, rainy season it is because again, because of imbibition water enters. Then there is passive transport. Passive transport, active transport, what is the difference is? Passive transport, there is going to be no expenditure of energy. Active transport, there is an expenditure of energy in the form of utilization of ATP. Yeah. You got, uh, movement of solvent from a region of higher water potential to lower water potential is a natural flow. It is passive transport. But sometimes the cell absorbs water against the concentration gradient. Lower water potential is there, but near How is that possible? Because of active transport. They spend energy to absorb water or other uh, molecules against the concentration gradient. So there is an expenditure of energy. So we call it as active absorption of elements. 
Now, since they are having this hydrophilic, hydrophobic part of it, they cannot directly take the water through in between them. So now there are certain substances which helps them uh, moving this water or solvent or other things from the outside to the inside. So we call them as pumps. They are calcium pumps, it can be sodium ion pumps, potassium ion pump. Especially if you have studied the opening and closing of stomata, stomatal dynamics, stomatal movement of them. In the daytime, the stomata is open. During nighttime, the stoma is closed. Why is it happening? So it is again because of potassium ion pump theory and theory. That is the acceptable theory for opening and closing of stoma. Stomatal dynamics or movement of stomata are made a sodium ion, potassium ion area. The sodium ions are potassium ions, they help in movement of solvent from this region to the inside, from outside to inside. So they are pumps which helps in absorption against the concentration gradient as well as it helps in the active transport. That also you should understand about. So these are all the functions of plasma membrane. In next class we will discuss about the cell wall, then the other structures like endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, we will go into details of it. In the previous class I had already told you, centrioles are non-membrane organelles, ribosomes are non-membrane organelles, they do not have double membrane, that's the reason I never included ribosomes under double membrane cell organelles, double membrane cell organelles are absent in prokaryotes, they are present in eukaryotes. But ribosomes are present both in prokaryotes and eukaryotes and they do not have two membranes. Double membranes are there, are not there. That's the reason we call it as non-membrane cell organelles. Centrioles are found only in animal cell and you can notice them functional during the cell division. They form the asters at the opposite poles. So these are all aspects that you have to remember about. In the next class we will go into the depth of study of other cell organelles.